Parents, I'll give you a different way of thinking about your children that give you a hard time. Don't raise your hands, I know. Your children give you a hard time, and you're like, you know, and you, and you keep yelling at them, and you, you know, Allah will ask you, and don't you know how you have to be, and etc. And you know what? You have to be intelligent parents. If your children are rebellious, and you know when you do certain things, they start yelling at you. They start yelling, they start yelling at you. You're in shock, you're like, how can you yell at me? I'm your mother, I'm your father, you can't yell at me. And then he says, yeah, you can, look at me, I'll do it again. I'll show you how I can yell at you. <laughs> they do it again. And you're in shock, because how could these kids yell at me? How could they not know what Allah says? Don't even say, oh. <laughs> That's oof. That's tafsir of oof. Don't say that to them. Don't, this is another oof. <sighs> That's an oof. Don't even say that much to them. And you're yelling back at them? You know what? Parents, I'm not talking to the kids. You're in trouble, kids are in trouble as it is. I'm talking to the parents. Don't put your children in that situation where they will disobey you. If you know that they're disobedient already, don't further their disobedience. Don't create the situation where the, you know the argument is going to happen. Because if you create that situation where the argument is going to happen, you are digging their hole in hellfire. Because there's few crimes in Islam that are bigger than yelling back at your parents. And you created the situation, you parents created the situation where your parents, your kids were yelling back at you, and you were digging their hole in hellfire. If you hate your kids that much, then do that. Otherwise, try to find a softer approach with your kids. Especially your teenage kids. I don't think any of you parents are going to find your children having murdered one of your other children. I don't think you're going to find that situation. But you know what? Yaqub his teenage boys come home and they've got a shirt full of blood of one of their own brothers. And the father knows this is all a load of garbage. They made this story up. So they must have killed him or something. What is he going to do? How is he going to react? If he yells at them, they're crazy, there's a bunch of psychos too. If he yells at them, what are they going to do? What do you think chances are they'll do? Yell back. And if you yell back at a parent who's also a prophet, you're done. You're finished. He hears that, he sees that a child is, his most beloved child is missing. He's got a shirt full of blood in front of him. Now let's keep, let me pause the movie for a second here. And let me give you a different scenario. How many guys here, younger guys, drive a car? Show of hands, drive a car. Younger guys, okay. Drive your parents' car. Or family, same car. Shared sometimes. So you, you borrow your dad's car, huh? And you're like, oh, I saw on, on YouTube, I saw they could do donuts in the parking lot. So you try to do a donut with your dad's car in the parking lot. Except your donut looks more like a pretzel. <laughs> and you end up ramming the rear view mirror into a tree and the rear view mirror falls off the car. And you're trying to put it back and you got super glue and nothing's working. So you take the rear view mirror and you walk into your dad's living room and you hand him the rear view mirror. What happens next? Silence? Here's what your dad says. I'm just going to be patient. Only Allah can help. Right? That's what your dad says, right? No. <laughs> no. They don't even find your body. <laughs> Yusuf salam's father is presented not with a rear view mirror. What is he presented with? A shirt with blood, a missing child. What are you expecting to hear? What do you expect to see? At least slap him. At least like punch him all in the face. At least yell at them. At least yell at them. Come on, just yell at them. You gotta do something. What does he say? It's one of the strangest places in the Quran from a psychology point of view. Very hard to understand. 
فصدونج بي why because he knows if he yells at them they will become even worse and he doesn't want his children in hell fire so he can only do patience right now because he sees not just what is happening in front of him a parent thinks about the future a parent doesn't just see what's happening now he thinks about the future if they become even more rebellious now then the door to the west closed for them that's it they're done so how do we that's the kind of patience and future thinking parents have to develop sometimes your parents get lost so much in what your children are doing day to day to day you have to think about the future you have to think about the tarbiyah of your children and how you're going to get them to get closer to you not further away from you every time you yell every time you yell every time you scream they get further and further and further away from you it's harder and harder and harder to connect with your kids anymore <coughs> and you're doing that and you have to learn to stop yourself and not do it anymore 